Okay, and um, welcome back to my Foot Manager Series 1 save, where we're just about to return uh, from yesterday's stream, which was a really great stream, just over five hours, um, and that was fantastic to have done such a long stream, uh, which was really enjoyable. But we now go into episode 19 within Series 1, which is, you know, we're making headway, um, and we're continuing to build uh, as we move forward. Uh, with this great stream which is fantastic as we keep building and moving forward uh, so really interesting there um, okay so we're just about to play Cheltenham who have third in three days time and they're doing very well Picking up the three points would give us a bit of leeway between Ch uh, Chesterfield who was second. And it would also make a bit more of a difference between us and third place. Which is exactly what we want at this moment in time. Yep, that's fine because he can leave. Let's try and get Labs his coaching license finally. Want that finally to be passed, which is really good. And Roberto Lopez, let's try and get him his coaching license, which would look like that'll be request through the board. Okay, they rejected that one, which I thought they would because it didn't get approved straight away. Okay, fair enough. Hutchinson here. He's on 1.6k a week. I'm going to try and hopefully hand this over to Lee Walsh, uh, my director of football, who can hopefully try and get Reese in, which would be really good. So as we move forward um, and we continue to build where we are at home now and we should be looking for the three points in our next game, um, then you know. It's a few games, you know, we're 18 games away from finishing the league, so it's all to play for and lots of work uh, to get going. And um, we really need to improve on what we're doing um, to certainly try and uh, pick up on the form, which again seems to be natural for us. Um, as we usually return from, let's just move this, as we return from uh, pr Christmas um, and New Year. Um, so our form has dropped off and we need to make sure that this improves okay he would be the best player can we bring him in on the loan probably not would be a very good signing but would be fourth best Okay, goalkeeper, I'm going to try and negotiate this one. Try and get him in. Ooh, he wants an increase on his wage here. Big, big increase from what he's getting paid, but you can't blame him because he is coming to League 2, stepping up from Welsh League. Remove and exclude that. Okay, I'm happy to give you £600 a week if you sign my long-term contract. Once more, not negotiating on the contract length. Is that or nothing, son? Okay, £600 a week. Okay, hopefully we can get him in because he he's doing quite well in Welsh League and obviously stepping up the League 2 is very different. Um, but hopefully we'll give him the experience to move forward now um, in League 2 and, and be the kind of player that we would need for backup and rotation. And with the stats that he's having and how well he's playing, um, it'd be great um, for him to come in and try and you know be behind Joe Day or perhaps challenge Joe Day and become the better goalkeeper than him and possibly challenge for first place goalkeeper. So Torquay have made an offer for Glenn Warren. He's got some good statistics about him. Goalkeeper in the end of 23s. £500 negotiation. Try to sell him. Jarvis will be coming in at the end of his contract, at the end of the season, from TNS. 
So a free sign in there for us to secure. Strike the centre midfield right. Not doing too badly. Obviously, Welsh League is very different to League 2. 19 years of age, though, so giving him opportunity to try and develop his career into a professional. Um, and, you know, if he comes in on a free, uh, we can utilise him in the reserves. Um, and then if not, we can try and sell him and hopefully make a bit of profit on him. Hmm... Yes, I'd love to, but we have a really poor relationship, apparently. As transfer target, transfer, don't have the money for a transfer. Let's try and take a punt on him. <coughs> See how much he's looking for. Okay, cheap wage. Okay, let's offer him a six month deal. He is a free agent, so it gives him six uh, months um, of trying to get fit, trying to break into the squad. Not willing to loan him out, even though you know he's not playing and he'd be quite good to bring in on a loan. Um, try and give him some game time and develop as a goalkeeper. Such a shame we, we had Liverpool as our senior affiliate, decided to swap them for Man City. Um, because Man City obviously have more resources, more money, um, and yet we're really struggling to get players in. Okay, good. Lee Harry goes and develops his career now with Ebb's Fleet, um, moves across to them, so that's good that we've offloaded a player. Okay, they withdraw uh, the bid because I wanted £500. Bristol Rovers and Leighton Orient have also offered contracts, so on that sense, you know, um, I don't suspect him to come in and join us, um, as he'll end up getting, you know, perhaps a longer contract from them. But we've offered him a six-month deal. You know, we don't want to, um, you know, we're taking a risk on him kind of thing. There's there's not much money, um, you know, where, where we want to spend or commit. Um, and, it's, and it's quite good, um, you know, um, if we came in for six months and he performs quite well and we give him a new one-year contract following that, um, just got a bit of work to do to improve. So Nathan Shepard here, we've just brought him in. Um, let's assign a quick squad number to him. Tommy Lindley's just joined us. He doesn't have one. Let's give him 17 and Nathan Shepard 18. Okay, good. And he's just been registered as well, which is good. Just have a quick look here. Goalkeepers. Yep, all three in. Good. Confirm. Let's ask Josh Sheehan to welcome him in. Okay, we just brought the young lad in for a thousand pound. He's valued at 7k. Um, you know, he's got potential. Uh, joining from Welsh League, obviously very different. Very good form over there for uh, Connors Quay. So now joins up and gets back into League 2 football. Um, and hopefully he can develop into a good goalkeeper for us. And hopefully push to try and be first team goalkeeper. Uh, long term, but he's got a bit of work to do. He's just come in. Um, so it gives him opportunity to try and step up. And develop around the goalkeepers we do have and hopefully you know being a welsh goalkeeper um he can come into the squad um and hopefully be the long-term goalkeeper okay here we go game against cheltenham at home i do expect to win every time we're at home um so it would be good to beat them of course um and it certainly would take a bit of pressure off us at top of the table um and also alleviate some concern of the point difference between first and third um so I, i'd be you know, very much an advocate of getting the big three points here today. We just have to put the work in um, and make sure we take our chances every time we're in front of goal um, and we really need to improve on what we're doing.
Oh, great shot by Lewis Twamley. Great save. Good that he's to had the confidence and took it from distance and challenged the goalkeeper. We're not very good at recovery. We seem to get caught out on that quite often and we try to recover the space. And we need to improve on, on, on not getting caught out and them trying to break away and react to it. Would have mind a nail nail draw here today. Obviously, I believe that we should be getting the three points because we are the better team. And we just need to be a bit more clinical. But I would take a nail nail draw. At the end of the day, a point's a point. They're playing very good football as well. Um, and we just need to keep building. Oh, just shitty little passing like that it gets us caught out. He's beat him now. He's beat him. He's beat him. He's beat him. He's beat him. Very, very good to have beat him now. Some great skill. Great tackle there by Pedro, who we've just brought in on loan from Crystal Palace. Great idea of a switch, but give it to the wrong bloody player. Great skill once again, got the shot off as well after beating the player. Let's try and make some changes here and try and freshen up the squad and how we're playing. Let's get Erehan off. Jake Scrimshaw's been underperforming, so let's get Will Swan on for him as well. Long ball. Long ball. Tom King trying to revert back to his usual tactics of trying to get the ball forward very quickly and trying to penetrate that attack. Okay, here we go. We're still now now coming into the final third of the game. Oh, almost got caught out there with him making a run in behind the defence. Got the shot off. Good save from Tom King there. Again, they, every time the window seems to reload, they seem to be doing better than us and seem to be in the attack. Yes, I've already changed that instruction once. Hopefully we can just get to the end. See, every time it reloads, they're in the attack or possession of the ball. Great little switch there. Great ball by Collins. Oh, good defending by uh, by Cheltenham there. Okay, now, now, quite a tough game. You know, we have more shots, more on target. We just didn't have the quality to put them away today. You know, when we bring on players like Will Swan, who should come on and try and get the goals, you know, that's been a waste of a substitution in a sense because he hasn't come on and scored or affected the game. Um, and he didn't really get going when he did come on, um, which was such a shame. Um, moaning about him again, despite playing him up front. Another nil nil. Um, it does only put six points between us and second. Um, and so we need to try and maintain some momentum and keep trying to pick up points and hopefully try and get a win sooner rather than later. Obviously, Northampton are going to be very tough. They're trying to push for a playoff place. Um, so we have some work to do to try and beat them or get a point away from home. I'd be happy to take a draw away from home um, simply because, um, you know, it's on the road. They're, they're pushing for a playoff place themselves. Um, so... You know, we need to try and get those points. Good. I'm very, very glad we could alleviate that issue, Collins. Because you just got Samuel Essel, who's just come in. He is a young striker from Birmingham. He's only got three league games to his name in the last five years. Um, it, you know, he's 19 years of age. He played for you in the 20s. He steps down the league too. So, you know, it's a good opportunity for him to try and get some game time um, and hopefully develop as a player and hopefully make the difference in the attack that we need him for. Northampton, they got Rose up front who always seems to affect the game and is one of those uh, boogeyman players who always causes us a problem. I mean, he is a very frustrating player for us. To play it against. Good 
Okay, good start. Frankie Smith out on loan, trying to get him some more game time, which is one of the most important things. Absolutely not. That's a lot of money, you know, almost £600,000. We would pay off a lot of our debt with that, but obviously we're making so much, we, we, we have so much loss every month. We'd end up going straight back up to where we were. We'd lose a great player and be no closer to paying off the debt entirely um, and be lesser at the back for it. So. Uh, well, that's such a f pain in the ass. Recalled because he was getting game time from us. Twat. Couldn't, can't afford him anyway if we wanted to bring him back and buy him from the club. It'd be great for him to return, but we're going to keep tabs on him. Um, let's have a quick look at his contract info. Finishes next year, um, so we'd have to wait an entire year if we wanted to try and bring him in on a free. It's so frustrating when you get players in and then their parent club just try to continue interfering rather than just trying to let you manage the player um, <clears throat> and just allow him to, you know, play. Which is very frustrating. Yes, I would like to bring him in, but every time I make an offer for a player, they're like, oh, not willing to loan him out of this period of time. See? Um. Oh, he ended up retiring in the end then, that's such a shame. Oh, Matt Rich, he ended up uh, retiring as well, but it seems a bit. Richie Smallwood, I remember having him quite often on Foot Manager in previous years. Quite a big fan of his as a player. Uh, they brought Russell Slade, uh, or Russell Martin, I thought it was Russell Slade then for a minute. Robbie Keane was in charge previously, um, but they brought Russell Martin in charge. Let's have a quick look at their transfer history. Uh, out to start of this year. Mayambi, absolutely love this boy. His contract's up next year. I'd absolutely love to get him in because he is such a good player. I didn't realise you could try and take over the loan deal. That would be amazing if he did come back in because he would make the absolute difference of what a player he is. Such a good player. Out. They've released players and yet I can't see where they've gone out. That's frustrating. Hello there my friend, just say a little hello back, nice of you to join uh, the stream, very great that people always join the stream and try watching through, so it's great that you're here today, welcome. Yeah, it'd be amazing if we could bring him in, he was on amazing form last year, 
much better form than when when we had him rather than the waste of time he's having at Dundee. Uh, no, I don't support Cardiff. I'm a Newport County fan. Um, just obviously Cardiff are very close to Newport, so it's quite ideal to try and pinch a loan off them or, or one of their players where it's possible. Okay, three days ago before we play Northampton, going to be a very tough game away from home as we try to endeavour in moving forward. Our crew have made an offer of 96,000, that's such a shame because if they sign him long term, that means we have lost such a good player. Um, you know, this is a Newport County career. Um, usually, you know, no matter how well I do with County, um, Cardiff never seen interested because I've worked for Newport, which is very odd. Because you would think, uh, you know, they would uh, come and take in a very successful manager, which is only down the road, but they try to stand by their principles. That's typical Cardiff, though. They don't seem to like uh, Newport County staff or, or players. Oh, yes! Get in! If we get him back, he will absolutely make a difference because he is such a good player and he was on amazing form for us last year. Can you try and hold hi hi that up to my director of football? Yes, they were unlucky. Um, and I think, you know, with the job that Mick McCarthy will do with them, oh, that's such a shame he's gone to Accrington. Um, yeah, I think with Mick McCarthy, stables the ship quite well. Um, I don't think he's been a bad appointment for Cardiff. Um, and, and I think, you know, you're quite lucky to have an experienced manager like him at the helm. And I, I think where Swansea have just lost Steve Cooper, um, I don't think they're going to challenge as much this year to try and get promoted back to the Premier League. So I think that alleviates a bit of pressure for Cardiff. Um, it just depends who takes over. Um, because I know Alan Tate is managing the game today um, for Swansea as caretaker manager um, or stepping in to that role for today's friendly. Um, but it is, you know, very short time. Oh, Newport, yes, Newport were very, very unlucky. I went to the playoff final um, and it was literally seconds away once again. Um, and then, you know, we ended up conceding and losing it and everything just went flat from there. So, yes, very, very unlucky. Second season. Um, in, in a matter of years where we've been very unlucky um, and it'd be great if we could go up but with the amount of players that we have coming in at the minute and not on trial um, it seems that we can have a very good season ahead of us uh, which is very positive I can get any player in. Yes, it'd be quite good if we went up. You know, the, the different contrast of games would, would be ideal. Um, which would be ideal. Um, and it, it would make the difference for the kind of, you know, players that, uh, players that we would attract. Um, different style of football. Um, some great games to come and watch. So it would be ideal. So in that case then, are you a Cardiff fan? Sunderland, oh, I do have a. I watch the series on uh, Netflix, and I'm sure everyone says that quite often. Um, and it made me respect the club a lot more. Like I've always liked Sunderland ever since they like had Roy Keane um, in charge. Um, I, I'm always a big fan of Roy Keane, and they've always had a lush kit, Sunderland. Um, and it's just always been something about them. But the 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 Netflix series was really insightful. I feel that you were really unlucky to uh, go down the League One. And you've been quite unlucky not to be promoted back up um, a few times. Um, and I think losing Jack Ross, I think it is, was uh, not the right decision to get rid of him. And he's just signed a contract extension to his club. Obviously, I'm not sure how you feel about that. But, uh, yeah, I, the series was very good. I just hope that they could make another one. And the, end, the new owners that they brought in, you know, turn things around and... And try to do it in a tight budget, which you could understand. But uh, they didn't seem that uh, truly invested.
Not a bad start there. Lewis Collins trying to break into the box using his energy and acceleration, um, which would be good if he could keep breaking into the box and they took him down and he won a penalty. Just re trying to rekindle our form and trying to find that fire, which we seem to be lacking after we come back from New Year. Um, we've had such a great start to the year. Losing Swan. Oh, what a finish there by Rich Hughes, assisted by Jake Scrimshaw. What a finish. Losing Swan is certainly going to make a difference. Um, I'm going to leave that for now um, because he is such a good player. But he wasn't on the greatest of forms for the last few games when we brought him on. So he's not going to be a huge loss. Getting Mayembe back in would be a huge coup for us. Um, and he would absolutely make the difference in what we're playing. So glad that's been disallowed. Um, we just need to keep working here. Keep trying to get the ball forward. Trying to get the shots on target when we do work the ball into the box. And be clinical in the finishing. Oh, just passed. I hope that it, you do get up into the championship. Because I feel you're too good for League 1. And especially with the facilities and the size of the ground that you have. Um, I really hope you do come back up. And I've... Just cast an eye over where your position has been over the last couple of years. And I think you've just missed out a few times. Um, so it would be good if you ended up coming back up. And then hopefully push for you know Premier League um, as well. Because Sunderland, you know, uh, for me, I would miss Sunderland. I'd prefer to have Sunderland in the Premier League than, you know, Burnley. Burnley, you know, they're okay. They're just a filler. But they don't really do anything. But I would prefer Sunderland. And hopefully, at some point, I would go up to Sunderland to watch a game. It's just such a trek. Cardiff winning the championship, yes, that would have been a very good game. Cardiff, you know, got a good team, good setup. Um, they got a you know very nice stadium, so that would have been a very good game. Um, but I, I could understand the track that you would have had to have uh, come down. My mate's a Cardiff fan, and he goes to every away game possible. Um, and some of the places he's been is has been amazing for him and uh, experience. Just always says how much of the track is, but slap four nil. <laughs> That's a shame, really. Uh, you know, I, I got a bit of respect for Cardiff, but I don't uh, support them. More, I, Oh, what a finish there by Lewis Twamley, assisted by Erehan. What a finish. Ah, oh, that's nice. That's nice you get down to see Yunnan as well. It would be good if you went and saw Barry Town play, you know, if you're ever down there. But uh, it does make sense if you're coming down to Cardiff and it's sort of win-win, you get to see Sunderland play. Um, and you get to see your nan, as well as make a little sandcastle on Barry Island. <laughs> yep, let's make that swap. Let's get Essel on the pitch. Just brought him in on loan, so hopefully he can bring in some energy and he'll be raring to go into the final few minutes, so... Let's get Aaron Lewis on for Shepard. Give him some more minutes. And let's get Richards on here for Joshy and just get him a couple of minutes towards the end of the game. Well, that's nice that Cardiff are one of your favourite clubs. That's quite that's quite nice and ideal. Especially, you know, if they do get back in the Premier League themselves um, and they do have um, opportunity of playing some really big clubs as well, which is great for, um, you know, Welsh economy. Um, and, and, you know, it's good for the local area. Just the only thing about Cardiff is a complete nightmare around the stadium for parking. There's not much parking realistically, unless, you know, you're willing to walk a considerable amount of distance. Okay, we have the FA Cup fourth round next where we played Leeds, scummy, scummy Leeds. Um, so I really hope that we can beat Leeds and knock them out and progress further in the Cup. But this is a very good game um, for us at home in the FA Cup as well. So hopefully we can make a bit of money off that. Especially when they're a Premier League club. Let's just have a quick look. History. Managers. Um, well. Since Bielsa got sacked. Which I don't think would happen anytime soon. Um, they brought in Les Reed. Caretaker. Paco Hermes. Didn't last that long. Because he was shite. Brought in Mark Jackson. Then they brought in Brendan Rodgers. And then they sacked him. 
which I think Brendan would actually do better in real life. Then he had Mark Jackson, caretaker, and he was doing alright, to be fair. Tim Sherwood, I do like him, but they sacked him. Mark Jansen, caretaker again. And now they've brought in Veliko Pornovic. Pornovic. So where's Bielsa these days? Ah, oh, retired. And Les Reed is retired. Tim Sherwood, unemployed. Let's just have a quick look at where Brendan is. Brendan's at West Ham. Okay, so it would be great to beat Leeds. Obviously, this is a very good home game for us to play a Premier League side. Um, and hopefully it does bring in some money for us, which is very much needed um, to stable our financial position. Uh, so I really hope that we can beat them and, and go further in the Cup. Okay, that's fair enough because he, we offered him £675 a week. He's on 20 k a week, so obviously was never going to get him. Why? So they it's been cancelled, so they can probably in the under twenty threes and not play anywhere. If I was a half a million, we'd never get him in. This is why Cardiff are a complete nightmare of a club. Why has that been cancelled? I wish I'd give you a reason why that was cancelled. Um, getting him in would have absolutely made a difference. Such a good player. And he's just going to be wasted by Cardiff because they don't know how to manage their players. Okay, good 3 now win. Demetrio played very well. Even if we could get... Even if we did want him, sorry, we couldn't afford him. But we could possibly bring him on loan. Uh, it just says cancelled. That's really, really frustrating. Oh, maybe that's why he's played for both Cardiff and Dundee. Mm. Would like to make that offer. But we can't, because we can't afford him. Oh, York. I've got quite a few players out on loan at York at the minute. They're not a bad little club down in National League. How are you getting on with York? Are you still in National League or have you got promoted with them? I can imagine they don't have the greatest amount of funds. Like, we're very limited on funds. So National League would be very tough um, to sort of manage a budget and try to get players and obviously be reliant on loans, I suppose. Good that both of these are getting game time. Calvin, you know, he is uh, 19 years of age, building up the amount of league games he's got to his name, hopefully building up clean sheets and experience. Maybe a first team goalkeeper for us in years to come. And then we have Rolando Rojas out on loan as well, doing very, very well out on loan. Perhaps National League is his level, valued at 51k. So if we sold him for £50,000, that we brought him in on a free and he's able to develop his career, um, that would be great. Offer me from Miyambi. Target failure, of course. We can't afford him. Oh, that's very good. National League playoff spot. Well, I hope you get promoted and get in the League 2. Um, that would be be quite good. It's always cool when you start from the lower leagues down. Obviously, I started with County because they're my favourite club. Um, and I, 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 I want to try and get them into the Premier League, which I've done before. Um, but since you know, since I started, we finished 14th um, in, our fir in my first season. Second season, then we got promoted. Uh, third season then was in um, League 2. Um, third season got relegated back to League 2 um, and then season 4 we were in playoff semi-final just lost out to uh, Salford who ended up getting promoted um, over us and now obviously we're in our 5th season and we're trying to win the league title there's 16 games left to go we really need to start winning games sooner rather than later um, but yeah this is the 5th season in I'm trying to push for League One once again. But I hope you get promoted. Um, 
uh, and come up. Obviously, it's going to be a very different challenge if you get into League Two. Yes, wouldn't same same. Um, you know, we I would not mind staying in League Two. The only expectation from the board is to, that's a shame he signed for Crew. Um, the expectation from the board this season is to finish in the top half, so we're over exceeding expectations. And then next season they've set the standard um, of uh, trying to get into playoff, which I believe we can. Um, so you know, if we lose a title. I'll be fuming because we've been top of the table all year um, and certainly first place. And um, and uh, you know we would have overachieved again, um, finishing playoffs. But I really believe that next year we could finish in playoffs again. Um, and obviously we're heavily reliant on free transfers and loans and uh, uh, some of the academy players. So it's great to try and develop the youth here and to try and stabilise the club. Um, because we, we constantly seem to be losing money um, and I'm constantly selling players to try and even that out. So I'm doing as much as I can, but obviously I don't want to sell every one of my best players like Zach or who, I, or who I've had a few offers from. Um, because I, I know with the amount that we're losing every month, it would only chip a bit off um, and that debt would build back up anyway. Um, and we'd end up losing a better player and um, we wouldn't finish in a position that we're trying to push for. Your side has been pushed, has so far pushed three opponents to the wayside, but now face a tougher challenge. Can a four follow? Um, yes, let's say that. Given the importance of the upcoming match for the two teams, there is an incredible hunger from the county fans to get a positive result. Does that give added pressure? Um, yes, extra desire, okay. Yep. Leeds are not accustomed to playing a smaller stadium, which such as Roddy Parade. Do you think that could work in your favour? Nobody's given us a chance. <laughs> Okay, that's good. Nice little press conference there. Oh, wow, you're overachieving again. So, you know, you're doing a very, very good job. Um, you know, as you said, if, if you get promoted, you know, that's good. But if you stay, you know, you're happy either way. So that is uh, that is good as well for yourself. Um, how old is this boy? 22. Freeze, Haynes there, good. Hawkins underperforming, very, very low. Listed for loan, transfer off of the club's loan, so we'll be good to try and get him some game time. If we do get into League One, no, it's going to be very tough because we do have very little finances available. Um, and this is what happened last time, we had no finances available, um, and then we were really struggling. Um, and then we ended up getting relegated as a result of it because we just couldn't bring in the players and we tried to make a few free transfers and we attracted you know, some good standard players um, which we wouldn't have if we was in League 2 um, but we ended up getting relegated um, and you know, we find ourselves in League 2 But at the end of the day, as we say in real life for county fans, we need to realise that we are just a League 2 club. Um, we don't have our own stadium. We don't have our own... Um, oh, that's such a shame. We don't have our own uh, training facilities. We don't have our own academy structure or, or facilities for them either. You know, We don't have the greatest amount of money available. Um, so to be battling in League 2 and getting playoffs is overachieved in real life as well. Um, and we can be very happy of where we're at. 
Let's put Dolan on the bench instead of him. Tommy Lindley, let's hope he gets back from injury soon because there's some good expectation on this boy um, and hopefully we can utilise him to be a good player and hopefully make the difference in terms of what we exactly need uh, moving forward. So we get Leeds United in the FA Cup fourth round. Good little speech there from David Pipe, our fitness coach. We're not expected to get a result here today, but we are hosting Leeds, who are ninth place in the Premier League at Rodney Parade, which is great for our club and great for the fans to be hosting the Premier League side at home. Great start, knock in by Josh Ian, headed in by Zach Cobb. What a player this boy is, 20 years of age, has huge potential to keep developing. We've had quite a few offers. We had a great start, and then fucking Tom King off the line. Um, has ended up conceding because he is such a shit goalkeeper at times in decision making can pull off fantastic shot stopping but decision making um, and coming off his line catches him too much and he does get chipped endlessly throughout the season and I think he needs to massively improve on that movement and decision making there we're off to a great start and now we're suddenly 1-1 of course they have very fit players very experienced you know Premier League's very different to League 2 and um, they have you know they might have more depth um, so it's going to be a very tough game for us to endure but we're going to work as hard as possible good pressure by them to win the ball back Zach Gore trying to play the ball forward very quickly good transition idea they've tried to break away after winning possession back good shot saved by Tom King good shot stopper at the best of times just decision making coming off the line is questionable Now, all we can do is work as hard as possible and try to keep ourselves in the game. Um, and the fans can be happy regardless of the result because they are a Premier League team. And again, you know, fans need to be realistic. Great little positioning and movement there by Scrimshaw and trying to get the ball forward. Some great football there from Leeds. We've done well. The cup with the pressure is quite even at the minute. Uh, they got five shots, three on target. We've got four shots, four on target. We just need to try and put one away um, and put ourselves 2-1 up in the lead. Okay, they're getting shots off, working the ball very good around the box. We certainly need Tom King to be on the best of his games today and you know keep trying to save every one of those shots that come forward, just not to get off his line too quickly. Oh, some great football. We, only if we had played the ball across first time quicker. Okay, well done, Tom King there. Certainly keeping us in the game very, very much. They're outplaying us, but their Premier League standard, obviously used to playing on a bigger pitch, um, you know, bigger stadium, playing wide football. Um, and, you know, with the opposition they come up against, you know, it's going to be very tough. And they've got millions of pounds to spend as well on players. What a finish there by Lewis Twamley. What a finish, son. So glad he's finished that. Well done, Lewis Twamley. I'm a youth academy boy as well. Very, very good finish. 2-1. Wow. Oh, wow. That didn't last long before Calvin Phillips put him back 2-2 two -two half time. <clears throat> Okay, we can be happy with the result. 2-2 two, two at half time. We put two against Leeds. We've taken the lead twice. Um, you know, we just need to keep moving the ball forward and trying to find our chances when we get them. Great finish from Lewis Twamley as well, especially for an academy boy who's come through. Um, so that's pleasing to see. You know, we've earned good money at home. Wow, 3-2. Great by Josh Ian, headed in by Jake Scrimshaw. What a game this is. We just really need to keep working and keep finding our chances. And improve our defensing at the back. Okay, come on, Scrimshaw, give. Okay, he's got the foul. I would have played the ball quicker there and you got the player in front and we would have pushed forward into the final third quicker, which would have been more beneficial than that free kick. Okay, good defending offside there. Okay, they're in possession of the ball again. Great work of the ball from them. Come on, well done, Lewis Collins. Just getting rid. Good decision making there. Oh, didn't last long. Switched the ball in the midfield. Looked for the striker. Broke the line. Strike was then one on one with the goalkeeper. Fantastic finish there. Oh. 
Oh. Okay, Zach Gore is on that yellow, and he has been playing very, very well. I have been concerned about that, especially when we got three defenders on yellows. So we're just trying to get Pedro on, who is a very good player um, in this game as well. Great switch from Leeds, by the way, there. Yep, let's try and get Essel on, try and use his energy and quality. Go on, Erehan. Okay, tackled. Very, very lucky then. Very, very lucky. Well, well done, Tom King. Great little ball by them. Great positioning. Well done, Tom King. No, well, well done. It's only if you didn't come off your line, we would be winning this game. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, shame that didn't go in then. Oh, trying to catch us every time down that side. Go on, Hughes. Go on. Oh, they brought him down. Off, 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 off. Oh, only a yellow. Only a yellow. I would like to bring Aaron Lewis on personally myself. I know Chavi Simmons coming on would be a great change and great energy for us. But Shepard's been caught out a few times. Aaron Lewis is very good on that right-hand side. Um, good energy from him. So hopefully he can be used now effectively. Okay, good result, 3-3 against Leeds, shame we couldn't beat them, such a shame, great home fixture for us though, fantastic for the fans to see, um, given that many people have suspected Count the Illusion, you must be pretty pleased, I am pleased. Um, would you agree that Leeds might be slight favourites? Of course, they're at home, they're Premier League. So we need to be realistic. Despite being less than convincing defensively and conceding the number of efforts on goal, you've come away with a result. Are you pleased? Yeah. Just how damaging was it for your team to concede on the brink of half-time like that? Um, yeah. That much. That match certainly entertained the fans, but it was. But was it a rather more stressful experience? Absolutely epic, and that's what football is all about. Yes, good little result there. 3-3 free, free against Leeds. Now we focus from real line on League 2. We play Morecambe at home who are 18th. So if we can get the three points against Morecambe, um, that would be great for us. Um, and then hopefully we can beat Torquay and then go away the Leeds. But we just need to keep working. Um, and we can be happy with that result at home. 3-3 free, free against Leeds in the replay. Would be great to go away and score. Um, and knock them out of the cup and see progress further for us. Um, but it's a great day for the fans to travel away as well and get to see this uh, second fixture. Just such a shame we've got to go all the way up to really, like, manky leads. Yes, I'm going to hand this over to my director of football because I would like to bring him in. I think he is a good player. Not being used by Mansfield enough. Um, did try to bring him in two or three times before when he was at TNS. Um, but the money-grabbing bastard wanted too much money. Um, now he seems to be in and around what he wants. Um, let's hope he's frustrated by the amount of time that he's not getting. And the fact that we're still inter interested in him. He'd be more than willing to accept the money we're offering. Um, and hopefully he can come in to us and what we want him to do. Nope, as much as it would be great money for us, he is such a good player. And that's what I mean. Sometimes you just got to take a punt on some of these players and we brought them in on a freeze done well. Newport Leeds will play Brentford. Brentford will be very, very tough, but it is away from home, but that would be a great fixture to play Brentford. Yeah, sometimes you just got to take a punt on players and, you know, um, Zach Cor is such a good player. We took a you know a punt on him to bring him in from Arsenal. We loaned him out back to a club in Nigeria. Um, he's done very well on loan. Come in at the back end of last season, done very, very well. And he's having a solid season this year. 
you know, I, you know, he's only 21, so he has a lot of potential, and he's keep working. There's plenty of games left for him to play this year, and um, which will be the most games he's played in a single season. Um, and he'll continue to develop the amount of league games he has and develop as a player. Um, so you know, don't want to rush him. In it. he shouldn't want to rush in his own career after he's playing so well for Newport. And um, hopefully, getting promotion with Newport would be a great experience for him. Um, and he, if he keeps playing this well and keeps growing, um, you know, it's inevitable that he. Um, offer will come in at a later date and perhaps from a bigger club um, somewhere else but Newport County have been committed to him and hopefully he stays committed um, he gets promotion with them steps up to playing in a different league so can grow on what he's doing 4-2 win there by Arsenal 7-2 in the Carabao Cup so that's a very good result for them shame for Brighton ok quick little auto save there Yeah, I think we are six points clear with a game in hand, so very important that we do get three points here, um, and it would certainly benefit us. Aidan McGeady, uh, Sunderland legend. They absolutely, you know, he's been so committed to that club over the years, and he's 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 really pushed himself. Well, he's retired. He's a scout for St Mirren, so he's ended up he ended up leaving Sunderland, and then he went back, uh, went and played for Charlton for a bit. It would seem, and then scouted at. Uh, St Mirren yes went out on loan I had two seasons and didn't get any games so he didn't get used so I ended up retiring and now is uh, scout but yeah I, I think he's been very very committed I think it's good that he's been given another one year contract especially you know coming all the way down from Premier League down to um, League One but at the end of the day he knows he's getting older and you know he, he's more than happy to still get game time um, and stay with the club um, and it's great for him to be committed um, and you know still get paid so decent for him you know if you're going to keep suggesting players at this rate I might end up going in for Jack Rodwell <laughs> that's if he's even playing anymore but uh, what a greedy little bastard he is or he was but still is probably Oh, good, good knock by Aaron Lewis. Very, very good player Aaron Lewis is. You know, Haynes is out now on a yellow card suspension, which has ended up Aaron Lewis getting back into his left-back position. So Lewis gets the assist there. Okay, Jake Scrimshaw's possibly suffered a tight uh, groin. I'm not going to worry about that, but we do know Essel is an option. And hopefully he can step up and get his first goal soon. Um, just needs to get more minutes. You know, he's lacking that match fitness and, and experience where he hasn't been given it whilst at Birmingham. So we just need to nurture him into the side. Oh, look at that for football. Look at that for football. Great shot as well. Great save from the keeper. Never corner here. Let's keep the pressure going. Let's ignore that for now. Oh, great. Chavi Simmons assisted by Aaron Lewis to assist for him. Knocked in by Chavi Simmons. He's such a good player as well. He just needs to try and find his form. Good little idea there from Collins to try and get that shot off with his left foot. Oh, he's off on red card. Things are turning in our favour. Oh, penalty. Come on, County. Aaron Lewis steps up, two assists and a goal for him today. You know, hopefully we can keep maximising this opportunity in the second half. I think one good feature would be, you know, if you could get someone like, say, Aidan McGeady, say, um, you, you know, your count, he's a scout, so you try to bring him in as a scout, um, and then you could perhaps have a conversation with him, say, look, would you, what, about, what do you think about coming out of retirement um, as a scout and player? I think that would be a really cool feature. Um, because you know, if you if you're like a club like County, you get like a great member of staff in, and you know they were such a good player, and you know perhaps if you were struggling financially, and they could you know be a a good player to register and you know come on and you know get some games, and you never know they could still you know play. And then I think that would be an awesome little feature to the game as well, um, because you know if you if you look at it in real life, um, I think Yaya Toure was a 
Liverpool training the other day, um, just observing, and uh, I, I think I saw a poster saying um, he could st from Amazon that he could still uh, um, do something, um, and he could still be a great player, and he absolutely could. I think you know he retired too soon, and I I think he could easily still be playing. Um, it's just such a shame he's retired, but he's trying to focus on coaching now, which is really cool. Um, and his brother Colo is doing a great job at Leicester with Brendan. Um, so I think that would be a cool feature. Yep, let's just make that one change there. Get Richards on, because Richards is a good player. Um, let's get Zach Orr on at the back as well. Claridge is picking up a little bit. Uh, is a little bit tired there. Lewis Twamley on this left side. Let's swap him out for... Hmm. Okay, he's having a very good game. And let's put... Well, they were all having good games apart from Twamley there. Who's not playing that well. And, Jan and Scrimshaw's not playing overly well. Okay, let's put Sam Essel up on front for him. So give him some minutes on the pitch. Hopefully he might find a goal. Such a shame we didn't find a fourth in the second half. But you never know. You never know. But I doubt it. Okay, Carabao Cup, Liverpool won 6 4 and Ag, drawing 2 2 with Spurs. They do have Jaden Sancho. He ended up moving the Spurs, but obviously, we know yesterday he just signed for uh, Manchester United. Okay, Aaron Lewis, he is such a good player when he's on his day and in form. So, I think even if Haynes does come back out and he's in very good position um, from the way he's played all year, I think Aaron Lewis is going to get the start after that great performance we just saw from him. Not much information to go off for this boy. Good aggression. Finishing. Mm, could be improved. But obviously that would only come with more game time and experience I suppose. End of the season. Mm. There we go. No expectation on a position. Uh, well, I want to go with that. Oh yeah, Will Grigg has been with the club for years. Um, I remember when I uh, was watching the uh, series um, that they paid quite a bit of money for him um, and he didn't get off the ground running um, when he came in from Wigan. So, uh, you know, I think I think he's been given plenty of chance over the years. So, uh, if he's been given his final chance, then I think he, you know that's that's about right for him, really. So, who is manager at Sunderland at the minute? I can't recall who's in charge. I, oh, it's Lee Johnson, isn't it? Yes, I get that. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, another striker and winger. Good for us. And we get Jaden Harris in. Finally. 
Oh, fuck off. The board have accepted it. What a bell end. What a bell end. Fucking board of accepted it. He's such a good player. Just wants the money. This fucking chairman, Chris Hall, wants the money. Fucking fuming. Wow. Yeah, Lee Johnson done okay at Bristol. I think, you know, he can do all right at um, at Sunderland, you know, um, if, if, he, if he gets one of the way he wants things to go. Um, I, I, I don't know what, how long he's been in charge now. Two years, is it? There we go, full squad. Yes, he's turned down Lincoln, you fucking legend. What a legend, absolute little legend. Turned down Lincoln after the chairman accepted it. Good. Well done, lad. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, how long has Lee Johnson been in charge now? Was it two years? Is it? On November. Yes, I thought I'd record him being appointed. I just, I just, it's only been that short amount of time already. So, uh, you know, fresh new start for a full season for him. You never know what um, he might come up with. One point two K a week. Uh, well, you know, you've won one point two K a week. You're in a nothing. You expect a thousand pound a week off me? No. Get a grip, lad. Yes, he is coming in to us, isn't he? So that would be a good little sign in there. Oh yes, that was it. Phil Parkinson was in charge before. Um, uh, he, he was doing okay, I think, and then he ended up not doing so well. Um, yeah, he done okay, but I seen things quite average across the board. But he is Wrexham's new manager. I did end up seeing that in pre-season. They've done all right on a few signings. I think they just signed someone yesterday, um, which was pretty cool. And I think they'll be in with a good challenge, Wrexham. I think they've got owners who are willing to back them, but not just throw in the money for the sake of it. I think they want to gradually see, you know, try and bring in the right manager, try and invest in the right players. Um, you know, they've had quite good commercial opportunities at Wrexham. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether it's going to be something short-term for the owners, like Ryan Reynolds, or whether they're going to be there long-term, um, you know, try and use a club to make money, but to invest in the right time and try and see what they do with the club. And if they end up investing money and the club get promoted and start making Ryan Reynolds money, he'll be happy. And the fans will see him, you know, as a legend for the club um, because of uh, what he's done to Wrexham. So it'll be interesting to see whether another Welsh club comes into the English league. That's going to be interesting. And, you know, obviously, Cardiff, Swansea, Newport, Wrexham.
see him, he's underperformed again. And I let him off last time, and I want him to improve, and I understand he's not getting game time. But the games he is getting, he's doing fairly well for, and he's more backup rotation depth. Okay, we've been the busiest, bringing in eight players. See, Wimbledon has spent £400,000. Well, that's very good money for Accrington to sell a player for 3.7 mil. Very, very good uh, amount of money to have come into your club. But 400 k Wimbledon have just spent. They're really trying to push um, push for their wins um, because they want to get promoted. Wrexham, again, they're doing six here in playoff in this save. Swansea, yeah, they're not bad. They've brought in quite a few young players, and it's it's quite cool to uh, see the young players playing in the first team who we've, who I've actually brought in um, on loan in the game, and it's, I think it's quite good on youth development. And Steve Cooper has done a good job. Big fan of his. Um, but yeah, um, prefer Swansea over Cardiff personally myself. I just think they play some great football, Swansea, and they're a nice little club. Um, but yeah, but it's all about Newport really in terms of you know the the Welsh teams in the English pyramid. <laughs> I he wants to stay at Newport now because I had a go with him for underperforming, and so I took his game time off him. But he's happy to stay now that I said I was looking at releasing him. Okay, good. Joe Javis, 19 years of age, three games, four goals, no assists, rating of 7.7 average. Player of the month, it would seem. Doing well for Bala there. Very, very different coming into League 2 from Welsh League. Um, but, you know, we can try and develop him accordingly. Okay, let's just do this to maintain respect of the three that have turned up. Yes, I finally got him, and that's the player that I've wanted. Wow, handing in a transfer request. Just sign for him. He wanted someone else to come in and play alongside him. He's underperformed and he's put in a transfer request. Wow. Would be a very good signing. Well, we're going to keep tabs on this boy. Let's hope he will want to come in. Good, he's dropped that. No one wanted you, though. Yeah, that's all I can do. Put you on the low market. No one's come in for you, so you can't be angry at me. You know, if no one wants to come in and make a bid for you... Pfft. Okay, failed his fitness test. Okay, hopefully he will be back sooner rather than later. Because he's just come in on loan and it would be good to try and get him on the pitch. So glad Zach Hall decided to stay and turn down Lincoln. What a legend. Absolutely love this boy. Okay, so we've got plenty of depth in our squad, which is good for us towards the end of the season as well. Plenty of attacking options, um, so you know we can try and utilise these players where we need to. Um, and we got some good midfield options and good defensive options, so I feel we're in a good position uh, with the depth we have. Number, I think we've got like nine or ten loan players who are in at the minute. Um, obviously, we're heavy reliant on loans. Wow, Tom King, you shouldn't be dropping that and taking it out for a corner. Oh, he frustrates me, this keep by. He does some great stuff, and then he goes on and does that. Oh, yes. Oh, it's been disallowed. Disallowed. So you've got Ryan Haynes on left mid there instead of uh, Lewis Twamley. So he's got into the squad as well as Aaron Lewis. Pedro on loan at right back. So uh, Crystal Palace would be very happy that he's coming on loan and is getting that game time. Torquay 
uh, have, have come out to play some great football. And they do play some great football. They're sat lower than where they should be on the table realistically. Go on, Haynes. Go on, Haynes. Oh, Collins should have been quicker on getting his shot off there. But good by Haynes. Typical Wayne Hatswell doesn't like trying to work the ball into the box. He just wants to shoot every time we got the ball. Typical League 2. Oh, the goalkeeper's dropped it out for a corner. That's good. Just over there from the corner. We're doing quite well. Okay, let's change that then. If you think that's going to work then, Hats. That's why you're the assistant manager to provide that kind of advice. And we do have the players who seem to swing one in and can do a good job. Okay, Haynes is injured. That's such a shame. Oh, he's out injured. Okay, let's put Essel there because he can adapt the plane on that left mid position. Oh, that would be a good game against Wrexham. I hope you come out with a positive result, so good luck to you in that game. Let me know how your result turns out against Wrexham. Great tackle there by Pedro. Great tackle there, lad. Oh, he's brought him down. Red card. Off, off. Okay, that might work into our advantage. They're down to 10 men, so we can overload them. Okay, good save there by Hamilton. 1-0 at half-time. I'm very glad that's a good result for you. Um, I, ho I hope that you end up winning the game. Okay, let's get Harris on the bench. Uh, let's get him on for Hughes. And let's get Simmons on for Erehon. Oh, he's brought him down. Oh. Love that by Pedro. Unfortunately, lost the ball while he was in attack. They've ended up responding. Good recovery by Pedro to be in that position there. Go on, Scrimshaw. Go on, go on, Jake Scrimshaw, lad. Hamilton nice and calm there, just catching the ball neatly. Oh, just over the bar. Come on, we just need to put one in. Good, good, Essel. Love that. Love that little pass as well. Collins trying to cut in, trying to get on his left foot. Not testing the goalkeeper as such, though. Well done, Josh Ian. Twenty six shots, thirteen on target, and we didn't even put one away. Oh, I hate that, especially when we've had so much quality on the pitch. Okay, now, now we'll take that though. Another point on the scoreboard. We just need to maintain getting points as much as possible, um, and we just need to try and keep building and hopefully put one away. Haynes out injured for two weeks. So that's good for Lewis because he can take his position. Great man of the match performance from him. Harris makes his debut. Yeah, he does have a year left on his contract, so let's try and start in the negotiation. So, not big pay, right? So, I don't have big money. Okay, let's go with £900 a week, loyalty bonus of 2 k Obviously, you know, the greedy little bastard of the uh, agent will want a lot more money. Whoa! Okay, that means we can sign him down on a new three-year deal. Fan date success, that's good. Five unbeaten. Clean sheet, clean sheet, all five clean sheets in a row. So let's hope that keeps going. 
Six points clear with a game in hand, so we really need to get a point against Cambridge. We're away for our next five games. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five games. That's going to be very, very tough. Of course, we're coming up against Leeds now, which are going to be very tough, but I hope we can get a result against them. Henry Sam playing very well there for the reserves. He's turned down a contract uh, offer that we tried to negotiate and offer him. So let's try and hopefully sign him down to a year and break him into the first team. Greedy bastard. He had a good deal there as well. Nine. That's the lowest I've ever seen a player rated in this game. Nine. <laughs> Why are we scouting players if they're at nine? Why am I even getting interest in these players? Ash Baker, he was at County previously, just being released by County. I think he's just signed for someone though in real life. Quick press conference here ahead of our game. Quite a few players out on loan. Let's just have a quick look. Chris Bruce has played the most with Don Calford. Yes, and Hughes again, 33 from him. Calvin, 30. Peter Berry, 28. Good experience. Mitchell Bitkamp doing very, very well. Jack's had a big injury. Uh, Thomas Jess has done the very least, and same with Scott Bennett. So both of them are 
out the door at the end of the season. Anthony Smith's doing okay. Bernardo Rosa's doing okay. Going to release him. Rojas is doing very, very well. Mitchell Bittkamp has been the best player, though. Don Telfer's doing okay. His rating, Mitchell Bittkamp, is very, very good. Let's have a quick look at Pete Berrio, 19 years of age. Um, some good career statistics from him. So he can definitely go on and you know make something of his career, even if it is National League level. And hopefully, you know, we've given another opportunity for a player to develop their career. And if they do go on and make their career elsewhere, um, it's because of how we've helped them. Okay, we need the three points here. We're 14 games away from the end of the season. So there's a lot for us to keep working on and maintain a lot of focus. Um, obviously a very tough game against the Leeds away. And even if we do have to travel up to this shit all they call Leeds, then, you know, hopefully we can get this done and out of the way. And we can get back to Newport and get out of this scum area as soon as possible. Cool. And a yellow. Okay. Uh, yeah, Chelsea is my Premier League club, so I do support Chelsea as well as Newport County. So I support uh, my local club, and then I support Chelsea. Um, which is my Premier League club then. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's why I wear a Chelsea top. But I suppose over, you know, if you keep watching the episodes, there will be a number of teams which you'll see me wear. Um, I had Juventus on the other day. I had uh, Los Angeles Football Club on the other day. Um, I've wore LA Galaxy, a Brazil top, I let it go Madrid. So yeah, there'll be a mix of tops. Obviously my county top I've worn as well. So there will be... Um, endless amount of tops and hopefully an AS Roma top over the next few weeks. Indicating he wants to come off. Ah, no, he gets a crip. He's a fucking professional. He's getting paid as well. And he's in an FA Cup game. You don't signal to come off in a game like this unless you're mega, mega injured. Oh. Of course, they're well up for it. They're playing some great football. And obviously, it's going to be very tough here at Elland Road. Great tackle there. Another great tackle. Well done, King. Aston Villa and Ollie Watkins, are you just a fan of Ollie Watkins then in that sense? Or do you just have an Aston Villa one because you feel like it? I don't. Well done, that's a good result, 3-2. Very, uh, uh, very good result that. Oh, I like the top. I think Villa's top this year looks very nice. I think I've seen the release of it. On Twitter, and it does look decent. There are a load of decent tops coming out this year. Yep, no worries. Just let me know when you're back. That's that's great. We're definitely not up for this game. We're not playing as well as we were at home. I think it's inevitable that we were going to get knocked out by Leeds, which is a shame. Um, but we've had the reverse fixture, and we've got a few fans travelling, and it's a great experience of the cup. Um, and we did put three past the Premier League team, which is great. Just such a shame, you know, we could, didn't, you know, conceded a shit goal where we could have stayed up at half time and ended up winning the game 3 2. They're outplaying us, but they're a very, very good organised Premier League team. So, of course, it was going to be very tough from the off in, especially away from home. Well done, Lewis Twamley, trying to work his way into the box there. Got a shot. Uh, 
half time. Let's get Hughes off because he's been tragic. Let's get Matty Dolan on there for Hawkins as well. So two changes at half time for us. Oh, wow, some awful. Pedro just didn't make the right judgment there. Got caught. The player went past him, picked the ball up. Ended up getting a great finish. Obviously, we're going home as losers today, which is such a shame. You know, waste of time traveling up here, to be honest, especially with the performances that we've had. Tom King is being tested and tested and tested, and he's pulled off some great saves. So, great man of the match performance for him. Such a shame that we're being knocked out, but we've over exceeded the minimum expectation was uh, the second round. We've ended up getting in the fourth round. We had a very good result at home against Leeds, um, so we can be very proud of ourselves, and it gives us experience playing in the FA Cup. Um, and obviously play, playing a Premier League team again this year season. But they've got millions of pounds on that pitch. And our squad isn't even worth a quarter of a million pound. Nah, nah, our squad is worth, you know, probably around two million. You know, if we added up some of the players' values. Um, but when it's a value of two million pound and, you know, Leeds could be worth about 50 million. There's a great deal of difference um, on that pitch. Go on Scrimshaw, go on Scrimshaw. And the fitness levels is just unreal, obviously, um, because of the, the kind of game that they're playing and the way that they're trained and the facilities and the infrastructure and the money invested and, you know, playing high-quality Premier League teams. Of course, it's going to be very, very tough. Uh, good finish. Very, very good finish. How can Tom King's rating gone up there when he's conceded? Uh. Yeah, good man. You're back. Nice to see you. Just losing here the shitty leads, but obviously they're Premier League, so it is expected. Um, you know, we never stood a chance if we played them away. Very, very well organised team, but you know, that's done and out of the way now. We focus back on the league. Um, Will be very tough. Okay, got the goal. Hopefully, we'll see you on a stream soon. Um, and I thank you for your time at watching. So, thank you very much. Hope you have a good day and hopefully, uh, catch up with you soon. Okay, so unfortunately we did lose the leads, um, and, and you know hopefully I maintain a good relationship with their manager. Um, but now we can focus on the league, which is the most important thing. Um,
Um, and hopefully, you know, we can pick up the points because um, all we have left is the league now. Um, we got 14 games left to go. We're six points clear with a game in hand. We're away to Cambridge. We're 15th. We're not on the greatest of runs. You know, we need to certainly get some quality in and certainly start getting our finishes. We get plenty of shots. Um, we got shots on target. Um, and, uh, you know, we just need to have that quality in and be clinical in front of goal. Um, good, he signed a new free year contract, which is great. He keeps turning one down, so it looks like he's leaving. Great, great admiration for myself. So good relationship with him has kept him here. And hopefully, you know, by staying here longer, um, I can further develop my relationship with him. And it's great that we have him on a longer deal. So, yeah, we've got to focus on the league and be more clinical and hopefully get the point sooner rather than later. Um, and hopefully start being more clinical to secure the results that we're looking for. You know, I will take points. You know, points are good because they all add up. Um, we just need to make sure we win in between where we're dropping points. Um, certainly to try and win this title. Um, because I'd be very annoyed if we threw this title away for the second year in a row. Um, and I hope that we can maintain a good focus to try and win the title. Um, which is great for us. Josh Hume being rested, Chappie Simmons dropped, Cassie dropped, Haynes is injured, Woodwiss still in reserves, Pedro Antoine have been dropped, Ross McAlva, let's get him up on the bench, let's get him on there for Carl Hawkins, quite good options, McAlva, Harris, Essel, uh, Elgin Watson is there as well. Okay, Zach Gore's back in the squad. Oh, we seem to uh, be overloaded with players, so let's swap Ross out for Lewis Garner then. Tommy Lindley is fit and starts the day, which is good. Hopefully we get some energy from him um, and he can contribute towards a great performance for us. Hello. Okay, we really need to get a point against Cambridge at the very least, especially away from home. And we need to keep building on all the points that we have, um, as all the points that we have are, um, are very important. We need to maintain this focus to try and win this league title. Again, a very average looking performance from us at the minute. Some of the key players like Aaron Lewis and Scrimshaw are underperforming on 6.5 ratings. So they're not performing at their usual levels, which does affect the performance. Um, and it affects our decision making and opportunity to try and score. See like there, 6.5, very, very poor shot. Should be working the position better and breaking through to try and score. So let's get him off the pitch. Let's get Elgin Watson on just behind him. Let's get... Actually, let's put Elgin up front and put Jaden Harris behind him. Hopefully they can open up the attacking positions. Harris's second game. Uh, Elgin's first for the club. Whilst he's on loan. Wow, great, great 
uh, acceleration from him. He's ended up scoring. We now found ourselves 1-0 down, which is very, very poor. And this just seems like it's going to be one of those games where we're going to really underperform. Let's get some experience on there. No, actually, let's get Mickey Dimitri on because Aaron Lewis is massively underperforming. And let's get a massively underperforming player off the pitch and get some experience on there in Mickey Dimitri, who is retiring at the end of the year. This is such a shame because, you know, we will maintain that with six points clear rather than nine. Um, so we're failing to take the option. You know, it's a second loss in a row, third loss in the league of the season. So I hope we can turn things around. Go on and finish there by Algon Watson, assisted by Mickey Dimitri. Well done, Dimitri. This is why you come on the pitch. And great finish by the on loan boy from Everton so it's great that the Welsh boy has scored um, and has come down to a local Welsh club oh fuck's sake we get back in the game and then we go and give away a shitty penalty like that wow we're back in the game and we give away a penalty for fuck's sake Yeah, there we go. When the minutes tick, 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 tick like this, it means that the game is over and we've lost, which is such a shame. There you go, 3-1. Game's over. Thank you very much. Well done. Waste of time. Poor... Poor, very, very poor, especially with the players we brought on as well. Got Chesterfield now, knowing our luck, we'll lose the fucking Chesterfield. Okay, just gonna have a quick five minute comfort break.
Okay, just had to have a quick break there, but now we're straight in back in the swing of things. Unfortunately, we're now only three points clear of Chesterfield with a game in hand. Obviously, if we lose to Chesterfield, we will still have another game in hand. We're only, you know, three points clear at the moment rather than the original nine. And there was one point where we were 12. Well done to Watson scoring on his debut, by the way. Um, now it's great to see we just need him um, to score. Our five-match undefeated run finish. I'll shut the fuck up. Like, it's not whinging. Constantly whinging, that's the way football is. You know, you're a good player, you play well when you come on, but at the end of the day, you know, I need to focus on the team um, and my team decisions. So, Winger, complete winger. I love Jermaine Defoe, but you don't have to whinge at me. Really need to try and get a result here. Even if it's a draw, you know, getting that point is key for what we need to do at the minute. Okay, I think the rest of our, you know, we've got quite a few games in the next few weeks where we're away, 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 which doesn't help, you know, constantly travelling, some very tough, you know, uh, fixtures, and it's tougher on the road, um, so we need to try and maximise how many points we get on the road, look, we're away to Chesterfield, away to Lincoln, away to Rochdale, before we finally have some home games, uh, so home against Hackerton, home against Scunthorpe, away, home, away, home, away, away, home, and the last game of the season is away, so we do have a lot of work to do, the form seems to have dropped off a bit, which is such a shame, we seem to have dropped off ever since I've changed some of the responsibilities from Hatswell um, until my new first team coach, which is a bit strange considering the new first team coach I brought in, his tactical attribute is higher, so he does have more tactical understanding, so you know we would set up to do very well um, with the better tactical understanding. Um, but we seem to have dropped off since, um, which is a shame. Good that we're, you know, seem to have the energy going here today. Oh, good save. Come on, let's get the energy going. Let's try and put ourselves 1-0 up first. Cheltenham 2-0 up against Grimsby. They're off to a flying start. That's a good result for them. Oh, Great position, but how does it go flying over the bar? That's the kind of position which you find yourself in. You should be finishing. Should be a nice natural finish into the goal. Lovely. Pass the goalkeeper. 
Pedro's obviously young. He's lacked the game time, so you know that you know he's going to understand the game better as he gets more game time, and obviously he's going to have more urgency and he'll learn. And but he is a player of great quality, so I think you know with more game time he'll continue developing, um, and he'll be such a cute player. Go on, Scrimshaw. Go on, give across the queues. Oh, it's out for a throw in. Come on, we just need to keep this energy up and we need to put ourselves 1-0 up. Go on, go on, break away. Look how many players were breaking away there. It was Twamley getting the shot off. Could have been a lot better there. Oh, Tom King, you should be catching that. Go on, Scrimshaw. Go on, go on, break away. Go on, go on, go on. He was on such amazing form at the start of the season. Then he's picked up an injury and he's come back and he's just not really scored or done anything. And he gets the odd goal here and there. We need him to be scoring week in, week out. Ever since he got recalled for, by Bournemouth back when he was playing for them, his form has not rekindled back to that high energy level which we saw when he was on loan for the second season and he was doing very, very well. So one thing I want to know is when you have a poor relationship with a club and it says you the, the you can't take this player on because of the poor existing relationship, that uh, the poor relationship that exists between these two clubs, is there any way of repairing that at all? Which is something that I want to know. Okay, Haynes isn't doing well at left back. We're going to put Aaron Lewis on for him. And we're going to bring off Hughes. Swap in for Josh Ian. Swap Hughes for Simmons. And lost swap Scrimshaw for Algot Watson. Which I hope he can score for a second game in a row. Which would be great if he could. And hopefully he'll keep developing with the more game time that comes his way as well. Yes, get in, Sacco. Assisted by Aaron Lewis. Come on. Come on. Great save there by the keeper. Oh, great save, but I think he was offside. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ref, ref, ref. All right, go on, let's have the corner, let's have the corner. Ref now, thank you. Wow, that is a huge win. Big, big three points there. Huge win. Exactly what we needed. Whew. Bit of breathing space for away to Lincoln now. Lincoln's going to be a tough game, but that was a good win that we needed. Well done, Zach Gore. Great player. Absolute great player. Makes a difference. If he ended up leaving, we would have been... So we're six points clear with a game in hand now. If we beat Lincoln, which we absolutely need to, um, you know, we would take a lot of pressure off. Um, and we do need to come back with that win. So it's not as warm as it was yesterday, but it's still 18 degrees, so it is like muggy warm on a very strange looking day. Okay, Jana had a hat trick, so let's put him back up to the seniors, but let's make him available for the end of 23 for 90 minutes. Hopefully he can start scoring, improve his form and fitness. Sakor out for 13 days, oh that's all we need, because he's been such a good player.
and Matty Dolan not signing a new contract, but he is wanted by Bolton. So it looks like he will be off at the end of the season after 200 odd games for us. Um, you know, Bolton are in a higher league, and when you're, you know, in your 30s and you have the opportunity to go up the league and play for Bolton, you know, it's not a bad little move for yourself. Um, so you can't blame him for going on um, for the move that seems to have presented. Come on, Newport County, here we are playing Lincoln. Of course, it's going to be a very tough game. Um, I just hope that we can secure at least a point away from home um, and that we can try and keep adding on the amount of points that we're getting um, because, you know, the points are going to make the difference at the end of the season. They tried chipping Tom King there. Um, they know that he is weak and he usually gets caught off his line. Um, so I'm glad that he was able to deal with that then. Oh, they're catching us. They're trying to use that long ball, put pressure on the defence, um, and they're trying to break behind the defence. Um, and try and get their shots off. Like now every time it loads, it seems like they're in possession of the ball, they're in attack. Breaks away, breaks away, breaks away, breaks away, breaks away. Don't deal well with her at the back. Ended up giving a shot away. Tom King, they are seemingly a lot better than us at the start of this game. Um, I just hope that we can get a point on the road. Um, and again, as I said, every point adds up. But there we go, that's exactly what we needed. That's exactly what we needed there. Pedro is turning into such a great little player. I hope that we can get him in on loan again next year. And even if we do get promoted, he'll be uh, you know, willing to step up. But he seems quite adaptable playing on the right back. On centre back, there's Lewis Twamley with the finish. Assisted by Joshi. And this is exactly what we need. This kind of energy and quality. We need to be putting goals away. Um, and we just need to keep going now with this form. Um, and we need to try and score. But yet Lincoln now seem to be responding and they're all over us. Attack, attack, attack. There we go, another corner. <laughs> they're all over us.
Wow. Wow. What awful fucking defending. Look, why is he not pressing him? He literally stood there and watched him. He then played off the ball. Awful defending by Haynes. Number 20, Zach Orr should have got across. No, Pedro should have got across better. And what the fuck was Tom King doing? Where's the leadership at the back or the organisation? Wow, that was so bad. How didn't we deal with that effectively? And how did, you know, Tom King not make the decision, all right, I'm going to drop back. They should deal with it. If they get the shot off, I'm going to be here. Instead, he come flying out of his, off his line, which he always does. And yet it's ended up costing us. For fuck's sake. And then let's get Scrimshaw off because he's not scoring. Let's get John Aron who scored a hat-trick for the under-23s in the week. He does have some quality. He just doesn't score enough for us or make much of a difference in the first team. Would be great if he could get one here today for us. Jana, come on, son. Still searching for his first county goal. Oh, for fuck's sake. I have to throw away three points. For fuck's sake. I thought I was just going to tick, 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 and the game would have been over. We would have been happy. And yet it's ended up ticking, and they fucking score from it. Come on, come on. Come on. Score from the corner. Come on. Score from the corner. Come on. Score from the corner. Come on. Fuck's sake. I have to throw away fucking two points. Furious. Shut shit. Defending has cost us again at the back. Well done, Joshian. Great. It is incredibly frustrating this game. Absolutely fucking hard work. Because we were absolutely flying yesterday and yet today, all, all I've done since I've loaded up this save is we've just had really poor looking results. Come on, we really need to get something against Rochdale. You know, they are very tough set up, especially at home. Um, we're on the road again. So, you know, picking up a point is better than not picking up a point. Um, and we need to, you know, all the points are riding up. We just need to keep working hard. It was such a shame because, you know, a win there would have been really beneficial. Let's just have a quick look at the table. So we're seven points clear with 11 games left to go. We really need to dig in um, and hope that, you know, Chesterfield and Cheltenham slip up along the way. Um, and, and we start getting results going our way a bit more. Um, winning against Rochdale would really give us a big breather. Um, of what we need to do. It's hard because he makes stupid decisions. And he lets in really crappy goals. But he's really good shot stopper at times. And he's really reliable when we need him to be. But uh, he needs to massively improve. Um... And he just concedes so many goals over the years, which is really poor. Come on, we really need a result here today. Come on. Got too many lone players here. Zach Gore slightly injured.
Why are we getting caught there in midfield? Why are we getting caught? Come on. Come on. We're going to throw away this league title for the second fucking year in a row. It is so frustrating. So, so frustrating. Wow, how are we not scoring things like that? Scrimshaw is a waste of fucking space. He's not scoring or doing anything we need him to do. Janab comes on and makes absolutely no pissing difference every time he's on the pitch. Let's get fucking Scrimshaw off. Playing like shit there and we're conceding. It's fucking throwing away points for fun now. We had such a solid start at the start of the season. Had a great run. Beating teams for fun. Scoring goals. Yet we every t every year we return after New Year, we just really struggle. We start adding... We get more losses in the second half of the year than we've had in the first half. We start throwing away more points than we've dropped altogether in the first half of the year. We start really struggling and getting less wins than we do in the first half of the year everything is underperforming in the second half of the year from where we need and want it so so frustrating ridiculously frustrating yeah we've got all these quality players no point changing tactics because we change tactics we start underperforming yeah you bring on all these different players and and they they perform like shit. They got so much quality. Collins, Harris, Twamley, Simmons, Richard, Sheehan, all there. Uh, you got fucking Lewis, Dolan, and they're all underperforming and playing very very average, which is so frustrating. They seem to have some good form, and then their form drops off, and then they perform fucking average. Crap result, absolutely rubbish result. It is so infuriating. Throwing away points and losing like that. See, throwing it straight, straight into the pitch like that. Absolutely shit throw. Decision making is poor. We're trying to throw down the line to move forward. And we're throwing sideways into the pitch. And yet now we're 2-0 down. Fucking poor, poor result. I knew Rochdale would be hard, but I didn't expect to go there and lose. Absolutely diabolical. I wish there was an option in this game where you could go straight into the team and bollock them for it. See, we've gone from seven points clear to four points. Chesterfield are rubbing their hands together. Ten games left to go. County's form has massively fucking dropped. And yet, they're only four points behind. If we don't get a result against Accrington, fuck me, when shit. We seriously need to improve what we're doing and really need to improve. I'd be absolutely fuming because this game is so frustrating. We've been on a real good form all season. Second season in a row where we're top of the table. And yet we come back after Christmas and results are really, really poor. Second season in a row, we'll end up throwing this league title away. Yeah, we'll be in a very strong position to finish in playoffs, which is more than the board expect anyway. But I want the title, especially when we've been sat top of the table all bloody season long. And we've got all these quality players. Like, we've got Scrimshaw, who was scoring for fun at the start of the season. He can't even fucking close a barn door, yet alone score a goal. He is really struggling, and yet we bring on all different players for him. Janna comes on and does nothing. Lewis Twamley comes on and does nothing at times. And yet, these are such quality players. And no matter changing the tactics and their role, the players around them, and you expect them to come on with the energy and make the difference. And yet, we're struggling. 
Yet where's that energy and intensity gone? We need to maintain high performance and that's where the success comes from. By maintaining that high performance and for us to remain top of the table. Oh, he's going to go in. He, Matt Dolan keeps returning down contracts here. And yet, obviously, he's about to leave the club on a free at the end of the year. So not much we can do, is there? Yes, this is what we need. Come on, let's respond and start winning. No, because every time we shot on site, we get loads of shitty shots that don't go anywhere near the goal. Oh, why have we not finished there? Why are we trying to dribble it into the goal? Yeah, we work the ball into the box, but I don't want you to dribble it into the goal. I want you to take the shot at the right time and score. Come on! That's exactly where I want. Come on! Right. Let's get Essel on up front for Scrimshaw, who is underperforming once again. And let's hope that Essel can use his energy and hopefully find his first goal. Come on, Essel. Oh. Yep, let's get Claridge on. Get some energy at the back. Hings, oh sorry, Collins is underperforming once again. So let's put Sheehan. Yeah, so I so I click on Sheehan and it gives me other options for not to play him on the right. Now we click on Collins, it says swapping with Sheehan. So let's make the swap there. Let's get Collins off and get Xavier Simmons on the pitch. Let's get Hughes off. He's on 8.2 rating. And yet you want to keep Lewis Collins on who's been 6.5 rated.
We won two now, frustrating because I think we could have won three and we could have put another goal in the net there and we could have come away with the three points, but that's what we need. We need to be playing like that. We need to be getting results like that. We need to be scoring, which is the most important thing. Okay, seven points clear. <sighs> Got lots of work to do, though. Lots and lots of work. Nine games left to go. Whew, if we beat Scumfort, which I really hope so at home, you know, we'll start alleviating some of the pressures. Okay, so thank you for those who've been watching. I think at this point I'm going to leave it here just for some lunch and freshen up. Um, and, you know, it's been a very frustrating episode. Um, and I think it's all come down to the final episode. For me, what I'm going to finish on is Series 1. And then Series 2 should start, um, should start periodically. I think I was going to just continue with a very long Series 1. I, reflecting on that now, I might still stay with series one or whether to go with series two yeah i might start series two i think i've you know alleviated some of my decision making on what i might want to do but uh yeah so i'll leave it here against scumthorpe let's hope that we can really improve um uh really improve on what we're doing um And yeah, and let's hope that we can find a result sooner than later because it's coming down into the last nine games and we want to maintain this title, which we've been on form for for the majority of the season. Again, we just need players like Jake Scrimshaw to just find his form because he's massively dropped off um, and he was on amazing form at the start of the season. But Zach Orr, what a boy this is. You know, he's been playing really, really well. Hugely stepped up to the to the League Two Challenge, stayed with the club. Just what a legend. So, uh, yeah, once next year passes, he will be getting a new contract. And I hope to develop my relationship with him even further. But, uh, yeah, he is such a great player. But, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. And I might pick up the series, uh, episode 20 uh, later today. If not, maybe um, probably be Monday, uh, considering a couple of things on tomorrow. 
But uh, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter, Twitch, um, and subscribe to me on YouTube. Leave me a like, um, and hopefully you get to see you guys soon. Brother Nat, it is Red Tonto 13. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.